you were really, really slow on the count that time. <laughs> yeah, it was a slow... And then our cat immediately, cat I don't know, fucking scared the shit out of himself somehow. I oh, his twist ties under the rug, honey. I, I know. I think he was trying to get it, and he, like, backed up against the trash can or something, and then Aww, freaked out. And... What a little idiot. And then tried to run out of the room, but we closed the door so he doesn't wake the baby up. Jesus. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Are you okay? You okay? Or oh there? my god! Yeah, he his phone slid off his lap, so he tried to catch it real quick, forgetting that he had a glass of mead in his hands. So then he just splashed mead Fucking all mead over everywhere. <laughs> should we stop? Should we? Should we start this over? I assume you're gonna need no, a second. I like it. This is good content. The man is covered uh, in alcohol. On my work laptop. <laughs> okay, go ahead, honey. Go get a. Wash my hands off because I'm sticky. All right, you good? Hun- <laughs> and then you down the rest of the mead. It betrayed me. <laughs> You gotta punish it. Show it who's boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess that was our opening. I'll just leave all four and a half minutes of <laughs> just us just bullshitting, just talking about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. <laughs> Hello, loreheads. <laughs> We're on our one hundredth episode. Hey, Woo! wee wee. Woo! Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> oh, I love it. That was great. Um, yeah, we're just going to do a Q and A today, as we uh, as we said, we have uh, over thirty questions here. Thank, thank you all. Yes, thank yeah. you all so much. We're definitely going to try to get to every single one. Um, so sorry if we missed any or anything like that, or if we can't get to you, or if I end up having to cut some out because this is like three fucking hours long. <laughs> but we'll do I don't best. think it will be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, question one comes from Crystals. If you had the chance to cosplay only one champion, who would it be? I've uh I've got two for this one. Mm-hmm. One just in terms of feasibility, like you know, if I had to build a cosplay myself, like I'd probably do Ezreal. That's like a okay. nice doable yeah. cosplay. If I could like blue sky it, I would want someone else to make me like mm. a really cool Varus cosplay. Mm. I think that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't think of a uh, if I had to do it myself. If like you know someone else was doing it for me <laughs> i i know we just did the episode but i think oriana would be my choice mm. oh yeah i would love to that see would just be cool mm-hmm. oriana cosplay is a really good one i had the same thought you did john where i was like if one i thought i might try and do at some point in the next couple of years would be vander i know he's not a champion but i think i could manage Ooh. it oh, you'd be good vander. you'd be a really good vander it's, it's feasible That'd be great and i guess you got big vander energy <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say greg is also it's like a I did Gragas one like a, a while back, yeah, yeah. so that doesn't count. Um, I would like to do You've something. You lost a lot of weight since Gragas too. Yeah, well, you know, I can always well, put I it do. back on. <laughs> the baby's helping a lot in that. The regard. baby weight, yeah. Right. <laughs> you, you've been you've been hitting them weights, basically, Vander. Now, <laughs> maybe Udir, but um, no, you know, if mm. if I got to blue sky it, I would want to do something scary like a Thresh or like a Fiddlesticks because I always mm. oh yeah, you can run around and just spook people. I think it's tons of fun. Yeah. Do you remember that fiddle? I was cosplay? just gonna say he would show up to all the events, and he had those giant stilts. I wonder if he still goes to these events. I hope so. I hope so. That was a badass cosplay. Yeah, that was so scary. He's like a I mean, it's old fiddle now, but I don't care. <laughs> he, he looked great for old fiddle. He was very scary it's for true. a goofy scarecrow. Yeah. He had the height. Mm-hmm. All right. Next question. I'm trying to figure out how I would say that name. <laughs> Dr- Dracon. Is it savant? Because I think, I, or is it svant? Savant. Svant. Sh- oh, that's the hard one. The, the third one. Show. So cra- Show Kraus. Nope. Nope. You've, you've been Gosh. a long time Twitter follower, and we love you. We've never had to say your name out loud. <laughs> never had to say it out loud. I didn't even think about that. Drake. All right. 
if you were to finish all the champions and some other event lore if they come up what would you do next in this podcast this is something that we think on a lot and we don't really have an answer to yet we do want to do the regions at some point and then obviously as lore events happen and books are released and games come out we're always going to touch on them but as far as like weekly in between stuff i know i don't i don't really have an answer yet we are we are hoping that um the champions and regions will take just long enough that the MMO has come out. <laughs> <It's a> smooth <laughs> And then it'll just be about the and MMO. And we have a new font of, of lore to go through. Yeah. That's true, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I know a lot of good. people have asked for regions, and I think those, obviously, I do think that would be ton, tons of fun to do. Um, we could spend yeah. a little time, I think, going through, like, Realms of Runeterra, because it has a few stories that don't really tie into champions. Mm. Like, that's that's mm. a couple weeks. <laughs> um <laughs> Beyond that, I, yeah, I'm with y'all. I think the MMO is going to be our our life preserver. <laughs> I don't know. We'll think we'll think of something. Right? <laughs> yeah, I think we can go back and do some of our first episodes again as yeah. well to kind of like. I would um, like a redo on Annie. Uh, yeah, I would like a redo on a lot of. Now that I know more about the regions and stuff like that, and know about the other champion lore that is tied into that champion, and there was a while where we weren't doing the AUs. Yeah, and I the like, old yeah. lore and stuff like that. I look through my notes of yeah. like Annie and Akali and them, and it's like three lines. <laughs> yeah, frankly, doing yeah. AU deep dives could also be one because, like, right now, John, mm. you, you bear a lot of that that brunt, but like really getting into it and digging into some of those stories could easily be something we do too. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, we definitely don't. If if anyone's worried, we don't want to end the podcast. <laughs> like, we'll think of something to we'll do. We'll find and some talk bullshit about. to do. <laughs> yeah, call that filler in you the podcast industry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like a season of Naruto. Right. 80 I was just episodes say while gonna... we wait for the MMO to come out. <laughs> All right. The next question is from Jose Hernandez. How differently do you feel about the podcast from episode one to now episode 100? That's a really good question. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's kind of weird. Sometimes I forget how many of you all are listening because it... <laughs> I don't know. I don't really think about it. We never Because all we hear is just the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, so, though. So, yeah. I don't know. It's become like a staple in our life now. Like, I can't imagine not doing it. Even that little break we had, I was like, mm, I miss, I miss I chatting know, with y'all. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. It was kind of weird taking that break. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like, so we had done other podcasts in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I feel like they'd always kind of been for us. Like we enjoyed doing them. They were just kind oh, of an yeah. opportunity to do what we enjoyed together. No one listened to mine and John's movie yeah. podcast. So we just kind of we were expecting, and and this seemed even more niche than that, to be honest. So we were <laughs> fully expecting this to just be for us. Um, so now making it to a hundred, and like we just passed six hundred thousand Download. downloads. Yeah. Um, so like, I mean, it's all it's all been a bit surreal. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say I feel. Um, I'm more invested in the lore too. I feel like I didn't really care about the lore that much when we started out. And I was like, yeah, I'll read some stories. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to get invested, but now I'm kind of invested in some yeah. of these people. Right? <laughs> you find characters that you like. I mean, there's some that you don't, yeah. but there's some that you're like, ooh, I, they did good with this one. And I want to see what happens with yeah. them. Yeah. You know? And like reading an Echo story that made me cry and shit like that. <laughs> like, I never thought yeah. I would get that deeply invested into anybody yeah absolutely speaking of people like annie too like now i also feel like more of a responsibility to actually look (laughs) through like (laughs) various like lore that's not immediately available places um because for better or worse there are people that actually use this podcast now as like their source of truth for lore (laughs) (laughs) um so I mean, while I would never recommend that, because, <laughs> uh, I do feel an obligation to, like, you know, try and know my shit before we go into an episode. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think... That's true. Yeah, I mean, I think it also I feel a lot more comfortable with doing it. I mean, y'all had done podcasts oh, before. Yeah. I had not. Um, <laughs> so I think, like, now it's like, whatever. I, don't, I, don't, you know, I just do this shit in my <laughs> sleep. But I think before there was a lot of trepidation <laughs> around, like, Okay, well, you're gonna say some shit, and it's just like it's out there. People are gonna hear it, you know. <laughs> you know, you get into the flow, how it, how it kind of goes, you know, and it, it feels a lot yeah. more smooth. I think that's part of why I would be interested in going back and like doing like Aatrox, which I, you know, our first one, because mm-hmm. you know, it's like you come out with a completely different perspective almost. We we've hit such like a there's like a method to our madness in terms of how we approach <laughs> things at this point, you know. Whereas before we didn't know yeah. what the fuck we were doing to a degree. 
So a new answer is we're just going to go through every single champion all over again. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Version two, right? <laughs> Nobody asked this question, mm-hmm. but I will say one thing that I kind of wish if I could go back in time and, and do over, one thing I kind of wish we had done is do champions in release order and not alphabetical. Mm-hmm. Cause it like, it does kind of create this weird thing where we do constantly have to go back to, um, a old, letter. like back to a letter. If like yeah. a new champion comes out, that's from a letter that we've already covered. Yeah. I think release order would have been really fun. Yeah. I can see that now. I do kind of like, mm-hmm. I do kind of like this weird, like bouncing between like, Oh, here's someone who's really new. <laughs> like yeah. here's Kaisa and here's Kogma. It's like, Oh my God. They're so. That's true. You know. Honestly, we would have had like 50 or 60 episodes of just like real shit. Shit <laughs> and just really short episodes all together you know what i mean yeah i don't know it's it's, it's they yeah. each it, i think like i remember we were trying to figure out the different ways we might tackle it and they each have their kind of ups and downs you know yeah yeah all right next question comes from Fa- uh faru i want to say i'm so sorry if i say anyone's name wrong uh what made you decide to start the podcast so i think the idea came from both me and john i said told john i wanted to start another podcast i don't know why i like wanted to do another podcast but i was like we do the movie one every week and it's a lot of fun and i kind of want to do another one and then i was like why don't we do something league of legends related because we were playing so much league at the time (laughs) pandemic it was the pandemic times we were playing league every night for like six or seven straight hours Uh, like i was i was i had to get a wrist brace like (laughs) (laughs) i'm not even joking Mark of a true gamer. I, I had to slap a wrist brace on every night before bed and then still wore it sometimes in the morning. Um, yeah. And I think I wanted to do something esports related because we were watching a lot of LCS too. And John was like, yeah, there's already like pro esports yeah. podcasts. Like <laughs> the dive and all that shit. Like Travis yeah. had a bunch of esports stuff going on. So I think it was John's idea to do something lore related instead, which I wasn't excited about, <laughs> but I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then when when he mentioned lore, I was like, I think Mark used to be invested in lore. Do you think Mark would want to join us? <laughs> yeah, you were absolutely right. But yeah, all yeah. I know is John, John messaged me, messages me one day. is like, hey, are you into league lore? And I thought it was related <laughs> to like D and D or some shit because we were we were deep into D and D stuff at the time too, um, but yeah, I'm super glad y'all came up with the idea. This has been tons of tons of fun, frankly. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. been great to have you. Yeah, it's so Aww. great to have you. <laughs> <laughs> we if if you weren't here, we wouldn't have that amazing video. <laughs> and my name is Mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question, Vera Get. Uh, if just considering their character, what champion would you say is the most like you? Um, I, I looked at this question and I asked John to answer it for me. And I think you had the best answer. But I'm going to say for John, we decided Ezreal, I think. Yeah, I think, you know, I love exploring. I love adventure. I don't use pomade, but I am <laughs> cocky about certain things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can be like self-conscious about a lot of things, but like, if you put a sword in my hand, you'll see the Ezreal come out. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're definitely like a little arrogant in a way that's like kind of charming and funny, which I think Ezreal also is. Yeah. Interesting. So what was John's answer for you? arrogant. <laughs> John's answer for me was, I am a combination of Nunu and Willump. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I am the combined, and I think that's really, really true because I can have the goofy whimsy of Nunu, and then I'm just a raging bitch. <laughs> At the <laughs> same <Pragmatic>. time. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. I almost asked Sarah this question about myself, oh, yeah. uh, but I was like, "No, I'll try and answer it for me." And this was a hard. This one threw me for a fucking loop because you got to be very hard self, one, yeah. yeah, self like reflective and shit. Um, but I, I kind of hit where you were at, I think, Rebecca. Like, at my worst, I think I'm very much like Lucian. And then I, he's, like, very negative. Oh, he's kind of closed okay. off. He lets he lets things bottle up. And he doesn't communicate his feelings very well. Um, <laughs> but at my best, I, I like to think I can be kind of like Braum. Maybe a little gregarious and positive. Oh, yeah. And no, definitely. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So I try and be more blonde. Oh, I like that you thought of your good mood and your bad mood. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an interview champions. question. <laughs> well, my strongest <laughs> <laughs> qualities are that I'm Brahm. <laughs> and my flaws are that I'm Lucian sometimes. It's like your star sign. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm, I'm a Brahm, but a Lucian, I'm a, you know. Right. I'm a Lucian I'm retrograde. A, I'm a raising Brahm and a, <laughs> a rising Brahm. I don't know astrology. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love that. No, I got the Brahm energy for sure. Mm. Especially with like, put put Mark in a room with a cute furry animal like a Poro. And yeah, <laughs> you'll see Brahm. <laughs> All right. Next question is from Gay Lunari. Great name. <laughs> uh, what would you guys bring back to League from older seasons? What do you miss the most? Oh, John, I see you, but I miss Oracles. I was also thinking that. <laughs> Really? I do. I miss Oracle's Elixir a lot. And I get that we get like a watered down version mm-hmm. in the trinket, but like I miss having three minutes and like <laughs> if you died, you just fucking lost it. So like there was the constantly that like I want to go sweep out these spots like the Baron Pit and Dragon Pit because those are important areas, but they're also very dangerous. If I, if I get caught there, I just wasted like what was it like five six hundred gold on mm-hmm. an item that disappears <laughs> sure yeah i missed not I missed even that risk reward yeah i kind of like that and like it it like paints a massive target on you for like yeah <laughs> i i did not miss items per se i think it's like the game is so different but i missed the harrowing like summoner's rift skin the way that the mm. map would be the colors they would have it was super fall and i just i loved the way they did that map. I wish that we could get something like that again. <laughs> you missed losing Banshee's Veil to the the Earth Tombstone near Blue Buff. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh my god, what? <laughs> there was one spot on the map where if you'd like click on a tombstone, Earth would pop out and poke you for one damage. But if you had Banshees, it would oh, pop your Banshee. Oh my god, that's so fucking funny. Yeah. Could you imagine? Um, I miss like a like a more serious ander- answer like how simple new champions used to be mm. like when a new champion was released I could figure out what they did pretty quickly there was no like it hit three times and then you get a dot and then if you get eight dots this happens like we still get simple champions like Vex came out and I was like I figured how it really fast you don't have to read like a novel to figure out Vex it's like it's really really straightforward but and I do understand why they try to do new things. They make things more complicated. But I, I really miss, like, the simplicity of oh, the yeah. Champa releases. Some variety. Yeah. Be nice. God, you remember fucking Ophelios? I remember the first time I got Ophelios in ARAM, and I hovered over his passive, and, like, it takes up 80% of your screen. I'm not even exaggerating. <laughs> I was so fucking was confused. Like, Excuse me? How am I supposed to read this in the 18 seconds I have? <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought the same thing when I took a Felios into fucking practice tool. I had unlimited time to just stare there and like look at it, and I like I swear to God, my eyes glazed over. I was like, well, so many Heimer dangers. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna <laughs> close out of this fucking practice tool and never play this champion I'll just again. Play Caitlin we're good. Again. We're good. No, no. <laughs> and even she's not as simple as she used to be. Sure. Yeah, that's true. All right. Next question is from 8-Bit Cody. Whose lore would you want to change to make it more interesting? And what would you change in that lore? Oof. I mean... There's a lot of good picks here. There's a lot of good If you're a long-time I... listener, you know Alistar is where I'm going to put my attention. Oh, that's a good one. It's <laughs> an old one. But, man, there's. I think there's another one asking about potential. I think he's got it. He's got that it quality. He just needs someone to come in and write it for him, I think. Well, oh, and what I would good. do, Globetrotting Adventure, pair him up with Riven, make Riven the main character. And I thought maybe you pair him up with Nunu at some point, too, because he's got a whole thing with mm. a little girl, and Nunu's a little kid mm. with a big thing. So you can you, know, you do some shit with that. I don't know. <laughs> a little kid with a big thing. <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> I'll c- cut that. <laughs> yes, thank you, please. <laughs> oh... I don't uh, have as good of an answer. I'll go ahead, John. You I would change Cassidan uh, mm. so that we get more modern stories about what he's up to nowadays because all of Cassidan's lore focuses on what he was before he is what he is now. Yeah. So, like, it's true. You know, his, his like, current badass looking league self. We don't know what the fuck's going on with him, and that's the story I want. I don't care. I don't care about his Batman Begins origin story. Tell me what this cool ass, void walking badass is up to nowadays. You want that Dark Knight. Fuck yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> also, revert Mundo. Thanks. Sure, yeah. 
That's an easy win. I I think I have two answers for this, and they're connected, and it's Cassiopeia and Katarina. Mm. Um, and I think you change them by either making that relationship, the, the fact that they're sisters, make it relevant or take it out. But I think I would rather it be made relevant in some way. Katarina in general used to be like the face of Noxus and the face of League, and, and she's kind of been shunned aside. And I, I don't find her that interesting, and I would like her to be more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Same with Cassiopeia. They both are like such old champs that used to be featured a lot because they're interesting. But and yeah. remember when that like Laldo quote came up about like the rose in the desert? Mm. And I was like, <laughs> oh man, is that a Cassiopeia quote? Oh, it fits so well. It's she's part of the Black Rose, and she's supposed to be beautiful, and she's living in the desert. Fuck yeah! And then we Samira. guessed it, and it wasn't it. I was like, oh god, it's Samira. Yep, yeah. the new Katarina. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How appropriate. So much, so much potential. <laughs> yeah, I like those picks. <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, would you pronounce that Chu? Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay, uh, next question is from Harry Chu. What are you all looking oh, forward? I thought you said Chu. The next question is from Her- Harry Chu. <laughs> Chu? That's what, that would have been my guess. Harry Chu. What are you all looking forward to the most in the MMO? God. I mean... Strictly for longevity of the podcast, I'm looking for great and extensive lore. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of deep lore. <laughs> yeah. But I'm excited to have an MMO where like, I can play with a lot of people that share interest in the world. Um, and I can start from the beginning because... When like World of Warcraft absolutely would have been my jam. I would have fucking loved that. I would have gotten so true. into it. But like I was so fucking broke when that game came out and I could not afford it. And then by the time I finally had enough money to play, like, you know, the it, it had crested. Like the, mm. the wave had passed and I would have just been like catching up to everybody. Um so I'm so excited to just start from the beginning <laughs> and like just I don't know, just like grow with this game. I'm very. I'm so excited for this MMO. Get yeah. it on the ground floor. Yeah. Yeah. I think kind of like to your point. I, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. I would like to see some big, unique like events or like dungeons that pull in things that we've read about, like something that does something with a kraken worm or just all sorts of shit. You know, that could be fun. And and I kind of had a question mark next to this one, but like role play servers, like maybe like that might be fun you could play like a really like hardcore noxian or like hardcore anti-mage demasian like that could be kind of fun to get into like we know a lot about it i think i might have fun doing some of that shit i don't know yeah yeah i'm kind of with you john though i'm looking forward to playing an mmo (laughs) (laughs) because i also refused to get into wow because i knew it was going to suck up my life and i was like i cannot do like a monthly thing right now so yeah okay Next question is from George Board. Would you rather <laughs> Would you rather fight 100 regular sized mumus or one Cho'gath sized mumu? Um I think either way I'm going to die. So yeah. um I one regular sized mumu is one Cho'gath sized mumu. I think the the bigger mumu would kill me faster. Mm. So I would rather fight him so I die faster. See, I yeah, said, that's fair. I said the one but only mm. if he's got zero stacks on his ult cuz then he might just be regular sized. <gasps> That's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I to be clear, I don't stand a chance against one regular sized Amumu, so it mm-hmm. doesn't really matter for me either way. Anything any way you buff a regular sized Amumu is just gonna be icing for him. I'm still gonna die to this regular sized Amumu. God, imagine a hundred Amumus <laughs> with his left. So many <laughs> tears. <laughs> now who do you Solomon's. think would create more like uh like water through their tears. The oh. hundred or the one choke ass. These big fat tears is big just like <laughs> Oh my god. It'd be so scary. I think immediately the big Amumu would create the most, but then as the little Amumus kept crying, hmm. it would suddenly be, you know, you're sinking in the Titanic. Interesting. You know? They would like overtake. That's like a very that's very yeah, Alice yeah, in yeah. Wonderland. Like when she's really big and she's oh, crying. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was thinking like a. Uh, you know, if a moo is big enough that it would be kind of like a honey, I shrunk the kids when they turn the sprinklers off. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's like Fantastic Voyage. Look at that big oatmeal cream pie. <laughs> God, that movie made me want oatmeal cream I pies. love that movie. If y'all haven't seen Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> it was a 
90s movie. We got a lot of young listeners. Great <laughs> stuff. Uh, next question's from Sean. If you could have a champion's ability set, which champion would you choose and why? Oh, God. This one's hard. I had hard, I had trouble with this one. I went so, two, I'll go two ways. Game specific. Mm-hmm. Like, only what is shown in game and the abilities I have in game. Saying, like, bard. Because that just means you get to go through any wall ever. Right? I was literally about to say bard, yeah. Mark. You're just <laughs> chilling out. Walk, and I like the meeps. You're walking yeah. the dog. Oh, I gotta go get this meat. Hold on. And you just become infinitely powerful. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Seeing that, or maybe Soraka, because you could help people. But I'm liking the mm. bard pig now. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then lower specific, you can be LeBlanc. You just get to be anybody. Or Aurelian Soul, and you <laughs> literally create the universe. Those are good picks. <laughs> See, I also put LeBlanc for my if we could choose out of game lore, but for that same reason, I also chose Nico for, mm. for in game abilities for, for the same reason. Yeah. Because I feel like no matter which abilities I choose, like realistically, like we're not going to use them for combat. We're just using them to fuck around and shit. That's so fair. <laughs> being able to turn into so, anyone is, you know. If I could be Zyra, could I keep all my plants alive? <laughs> Not in game. In game, they last for a few seconds and then that's it. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. You're already Zyra. <laughs> John, no. Oh, shit. I've had a, my spider plant has flowers on it now, John. <laughs> Only mature spider plants have those. It's thriving, <laughs> thriving. It gave me babies. Most of them are alive. Sure. <laughs> this next cash. Who also I was oh. Zillion, by the way. I think would also be cool. Oh, oh yeah, Zillion. You bring people back from the dead. Yeah, control time and shit. Oh, that's a, that's good, a good one. Yeah. All right. This next question <laughs> comes from a shit fucking weirdo, T Hex Hera. Can we ban this person? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the coolest lorehead spouse to ever make a last minute guest appearance on a Heimerdinger specific episode? I think that was Judd Hirsch in the 1975 <laughs> film Too Many Grandmas. I don't know. <laughs> Too Many Grandmas. <laughs> I second marks. <laughs> that sounds right. It feels right. <laughs> Love you, Sarah. Thank you for the meme question. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sarah. She's taking care of your daughter yeah, right now. <laughs> while you fucking rip on her <laughs> and call her too many grandmas. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, next questions from CK. What are you guys looking forward to the most in the coming year? Ooh. Mm-hmm. I put two things. Mm. I I mean, one is the void event if that comes. Oh, I'm very much looking forward gone. to that. I kind of thought it was going to be this past year, but we're not getting that for sure. So I'm really hoping this next year maybe instead. <laughs> it's the one. Um, and I know this is it. This is our year. And he's going to win worlds, and we're going to go to world <laughs> void event. <laughs> oh. but uh but barring that uh the nunu and echo games mm. are what i'm yeah. looking forward to this year yep. i am now now that we've done nunu i am so looking forward to the new new game yeah. i was like oh that's cute and now i'm like i will murder someone for the new new <laughs> game right now i fucking forgot about the echo game because the new new game just took up all my I oh there's that's the new game brain space um the third yeah. thing, I had both Oh, those. if they release them at the same time, or I'm going to be so fucked yeah, up. Yeah, please don't. Um, <laughs> and then the third the third one I had was uh, reading and, and talking about Ruination. Because we'll oh, probably yeah. do that in the That's coming That's true. Year. Yeah. All right. Next question is Legato Mark. Which champion has the most potential? <laughs> <laughs> Oof. So. So many of them. So yeah, many. I know. Uh, I put... Uh, Mundo and Braum for this one. Braum, because I feel like the stuff we get outside of the stories, um, like his his champion quotes, fucking amazing. Uh, his appearances in The Ruined King, fucking amazing. His cinematics, great. If we could give that character some stories on universe so that people didn't have to go to all these other fucking places to figure out what this character is about... That'd be great because the short stories he has do nothing for him. That's a really good pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I already said Alistar. I think I've made my feelings clear yeah. on that. Um, my second, my other one, I thought was was Jax. Uh, I, I thought he had a really good Ooh. setup for doing things. 
and mm-hmm. uh, just didn't have any stories. And you know, he's starting like I feel like maybe Riot's starting to like you know he got a Legends of Room Terror release. He was in that Imperian cinematic. Like I think Riot's starting to get on the Jacks train a little. So, <laughs> and the the uh, Ecathia story was really cool. That was a really cool Bex yeah. story to him. I liked so. Mm. Let's get a four story. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we haven't gotten to him yet, but I can tell already uh, Zareth, I think. Because mm. um, we talk about Zareth a lot with his ear. It's just Zareth and his ear in general. If you tweak a few things, I think that could just all be so much better than it is right now. Um, it's just infuriating right now. <laughs> and I just hate his ear so much. And I don't know how I'm supposed to root against Zareth. <laughs> you really want me to. <laughs> yeah. Really um, so that helps. I feel like they've kind of let go a lot of their old OG Shereman champs um, and are kind of focusing on like Talia and Void things, which is good. I want them to focus on Void things. But yeah, they had like a whole thing going on with Nasus and Renekton and Azir and it's kind of all just it's over there now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I kind of agree. I feel like it's a shame because I like the setup of Talia kind of being the hero between these two. Like Azir and Zareth who are both kind of wrong. And which not necessarily in how it's actually presented, but like in yeah, the ideal, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You know that could be cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, another one uh, from Legato Mark. What new AU would you add to the game, and with what champions? Okay, I had three answers. I'm not to creative this. enough for this. <laughs> oh, three! I did. I, I, I really put my brain power. Their so I got the me- the meme answer is lol babies, where it's just champions as babies, <laughs> 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 and maybe it's just an egg. Zach's just his little uh, slime. It's uh, a bloblet. <laughs> it's like Muppet Babies. Yes, literally it's Muppet Babies. <laughs> but with leeches, I love that. The one from the we talked about in the podcast with Master Yi was the Ionia Frat House. I think that, I like that. I'm still liking Ooh, that. Oh yeah, that's got legs. Yeah. And then the new one I really is like that. painters. And they're all like famous painters. And it's mostly just puns because it's like Rembrandt and Jax and Pollock <laughs> and... A dolly. Ooh. That's a collie, but she's dolly and she's got a mustache. <laughs> okay, that one, that one was a stretch. And her shroud is like a big it. clock that's melting. I don't know. I think it works. Oh, I love oh. that. <laughs> that's really good. Oh, that's very nice. God, I really want that now. I just want barn bard. So I want oh, um, fuck yeah. like a barn. A barn. <laughs> well, barnyard. Uh, barnyard. <laughs> yeah. oh my God, a, barn, a barnyard at you. That'd be great. Fiddle six is right at home. Yeah, he didn't even. He goes him. back to his old skin. <laughs> he'll be, he'll He's be just a normal ass scarecrow old fiddlesticks. Yes. I actually love that. Uh, That's pretty good. I was thinking maybe kind of like a WandaVision style '60s sitcom AU. Ooh, I like that. With like Lucian as the boring dad and like Senna as the fiery mom, Ooh. and maybe like a human version of Vex as a brooding teen, and <laughs> like, like a young Echo as the studious child, and Yumi as the family pet. You That's know? super cute. Yeah, I really like that a lot. Yeah, and you could just and, and then also if you can add to the Vice skin line, oh, those yeah. are some of my favorites. The Masi and Vice, yeah. Yes, All please. right, next question from Lane, I think. Is that an L, hon? I think it... it, it uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> what was your favorite episode so far, and what do you look forward uh, to do? I say, what are we looking forward to do, I guess? Yeah, like which... Uh... Oh, which episode are we looking forward to do? Our favorite episode so far, that's a tough one. I feel like... Um, champions that have very little lore end up being just so unhinged and really fun. Uh, I think Jack stands out as one of my favorite episodes mm. for sure. Um, and then recently, John and I did Lore of the Lore Heads, and the two of us just talked about our history with League, and I really enjoyed doing that. That was fun to listen to. <laughs> it was it was a little bit of a oh, nostalgia thanks. trip for me too, just to hear y'all talk about <laughs> some of that stuff, you know. See ya. But, yeah. Y'all so were, were very kind. Oh, I appreciate it. You're very complimentary. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. <laughs> As things explode. I took out the headphones. It's all right. I'm not saying anything important. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> oh Jesus. John, spill more mead so I look better. I got no. I, I fucking killed it. It's true. You had to punish the mead. Okay, sorry. We were kind. Yeah, y'all were very complimentary. <laughs> I appreciate it. Compliment me again. <laughs> that was so kind. Yeah, I think it is fun to bitch about things. Like, Rise of the Sentinels was kind of fun, yeah. but I think it's more fun when we oh, really yeah. like something. Like, Echo, Kindred, and the Arcane stuff was all a lot of fun to talk about. Oh, all that's yeah. true. The Arcane it, stuff was right? great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
I know what are you looking forward to doing? Mm. Ooh, I mean, my main is Zyra, even though she's going to be literally our last <laughs> champion. So I don't want to say I'm looking forward to the last episode. Fuck you guys. <laughs> uh, let me look forward on some people. Hang on. I was thinking Volibear. What about you guys? When we were talking about Orin, Ooh, I was thinking yeah. like, because he's gotten that very recent rework. And I like a lot of the, the Ursine stuff is just a cool idea, I think. And I like to learn more about that. Udyr, his rework is hope- good. Oh, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope I'm not disappointed, but Tom Kench. I don't know anything mm. about Tom Kench. And I, uh, I think the demons are really fascinating. He's a demon, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I think f- for kind of that same reason, I put Swain on mine. Mm. I, <gasps> oh, no, you're fucking wrong. I'm so looking forward to Swain. Yeah, Swain's awesome. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm hoping he's got some cool shit. Um, mm-hmm. And I also put Vex because I actually, I mean, I, I know her personality from her voice lines, but I actually don't know anything about her. It's true. She seems fun. Except she simps for Viego for some reason. Mm. So I lose a lot of respect for her in that regard. I mean, she's a teen. Everybody simps for <laughs> dumbasses. <laughs> They're teen. Well, that, you know what? You're right, John. <laughs> she's a high-risk right. pick. Cause dumb crushes. Big voice. She could be real good, but could be real disappointing. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, right. I also said true. Arcane Nothing will be two. from her point of view. Ooh, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's like a given. <laughs> In like two years or whatever. (laughs) Okay. The next one's from Silver Sander. What champion would you pick to do which is further along or would you redo an old champion that uh, had changed after you had done the episode? So we just just kind of talk about this. Uh, Yeah. Although what champion do we want to redo? Are we looking forward to the most? Like I said, I feel like Aatrox almost just because it's been... A, it's been so long. Mm. B, I know there's a lot of dark and stuff in Runeterra that's gotten released. So like... (laughs) It feels like to me a little yeah. nice to go like oh we go all the way back to the first one and see how we feel. Right. <laughs> also, like it's because it's the first one, it is our most listened to episode. Yeah, which I feel like is kind of unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, well that happens, you know. Oh, I also think Poppy will be a lot of fun. I like what I know about Poppy. I think is really a fun premise for a character. I'll say. Mm. I, I bet they do it well. Yeah, I don't know if there's anyone to look forward to going back to. More than Aatrox, anyway. Um, unless they added stuff. I would like to, Um, I mean, doing the Annie AUs. Although you did them. Did you do them in the redo? We did an Annie redo, yeah. didn't we? We did. I, I, I don't remember if I went that. I have to check my notes. Okay. God, we don't even. I never remember. It what disappears from my brain as soon as we <laughs> turn, know, stop same. recording. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. The next one's from Monkey Stank. No, Great. Mankey. Oh, Mankey Stank. Oh, okay. Also very good. <laughs> what is everyone's favorite skin slash skin lines, both serious and goofy ones? Um, I do, like I said, I like the Demacia Vice a lot. That's just really my vibe. And I want, I don't know the story behind it. I don't remember it anyway, but I just love the, the look of that one. Yeah. Yeah. Goofy. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like the space groove, I think is really slick. Yeah. yeah. And then bees. Those look really that's fun. my favorite. But that's goofy. specific to oh, us. The bees almost. are <laughs> so funny. Uh. Um, I like High Noon for, like, my serious mm, one. Yeah, yeah, I think as far as lore goes, I think High Noon's probably the best. Like, the one that yeah. I would like to see. Uh, we talked about if there would be another spinoff that's not Arcane. I would actually like to see High Noon <laughs> maybe more than anything. Yep. For sure. All right, next one comes from Jumpman4550. What champ uh, makes... Uh, wait, hang on. Oh, what champ do you think makes the best breakfast? Okay. John has the answer for this. So and I wonder if you do too, Mark. Did, well, I read this. Did y'all read this as as a cook or to eat? Oh. Oh, I my God. As a, as a cook. cook, Mark. But I love where your head's at. <laughs> where where'd you, where'd you uh, get for cook? Uh, Brahm. Oh, yeah. Brahm was Brahm my pick, too. would make you breakfast in bed and mm. cuddle you afterwards. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, I thought would. maybe Ezreal, because he might show off, too. Like, he's really trying to impress you, so Ooh, he puts on a full spread. Okay. Or Jax, if you're so really what champ, into eggs. So what champ do you want to uh, <laughs> What champ do you want to eat, Mark? <laughs> well, I was looking through like the most of them a combination of bristle and egg, Anivia? <laughs> uh, Anivia would be good. Uh, Agnivia. <laughs> I thought Rammus. <laughs> I thought, like, if you cook up Rammus, he'd probably taste good. I don't oh my know. my God. Yeah, I know it's fucked up. It's a horrible thing to do. No, it's okay. I'm not into seafood, but maybe fizz. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and some fish, some filet fizz. Is that a good breakfast, Does, though? I mean, oh, that's true. Oh, mm. my God, you're right. Well, I think egg nivea is the answer there. Yeah, I mean, does bristle right. count? Bristle? I did I mean, think about that. You know, it's, it's just Sejuani's mount, but, I mean, it is, oh, it is piggy. Oh, piggies. There's yeah. There's bacon right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I think um, 
I think Brom would probably <laughs> yeah, make it. Brom's a good pick. <laughs> uh, all right. The next one's from, uh, oh, God, how would you say it? Jay E. Young? Yeah. Like Spoon? Jay Young like Spoon. <laughs> Jay Young like Spoon. Oh, my God. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> Who do you consider to be the perfect champion? Lore, skill set, visual, skin line, et cetera, all bundled up. What a fucking question, can I just say? This is like... I know. I had a lot of trouble with this one, too. I had to really think. I don't even have like, oh, a, a, like one answer. I have about like... John's got... I'm already I feel like curious. mine jumped right out to me. Oh. What did you get? Well, I... My first... The, the number one for me was like gin, I think, across like... A, yeah. yeah. That's what John said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just the aesthetic, theming, the lore. Like, the, those were the three kind of things I was looking at. was like general aesthetic and theming, lore, and kit. And they all three just work so in tandem. And it's just like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and honestly, like I didn't write it down, but I feel like I I would put Kindred in the same bucket yep. too. I Ooh, think the two yeah. of them. Kindred's really well done. Yeah. Um, I think Echo is a really good uh combination. And then um, God, who did I just think? Echo was one of my honorable mentions, yeah. and Kindred was one <laughs> of my top mention. four. <laughs> oh, he doesn't have a lot of lore, but I don't think he needs it. Fiddlesticks. I think the fiddlesticks after his rework, reworks I think really it all good, just yeah. kind of. I didn't think about uh, it, but yeah, bundles together really well. His lore's really I could good. be biased because I just obsessed with his theme song. <laughs> I think, no, I think I think you got it. It's really good, especially looking at things like that. I look at like Brom. I, Brom, the lore falls down, but the other parts are so strong. You know, I kind of put Ramus was a, a, yeah. a pick for me because like mm-hmm. Ramus, like when you look at him, he's so just as like. I can guess what that guy does. And then when he does in game is exactly what you think he does. <laughs> and then the lore, <laughs> the bits point. I've read ahead of like ahead from like way back when they first redid it. It's like they really play around with what they do with his voice. I think yeah, so he's also one of my picks, I think. But mm. these are all good. These are all really good picks. Yeah. So Charlie has a similar question. Favorite champion overall, taking into consideration the lore, gameplay, and all that. I guess it's just if you have a favorite champ, which I know is Kenan for John. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I uh, I think for me, and like considering all that, it actually was Draven, which is not one of my perfect champion picks, mm. but just like oh, I get you, his personality lines up so well, and I like I actually like to play him. There are one like I don't like to play Jin that much, even though he's uh, like. He is academically the perfect champion, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I like to play Anivia, but like her lore does not like, you know, she doesn't have that part working, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like it's a testament to Draven that he had there they released a champion with so much personality that it convinced the like the the narrative team to start like to figure out how to code conditional inter like champion interactions. Mm. Like none of that shit existed before Draven. Mm. That was all because of Draven. They're like, you know what? We could have Draven doing some really cool shit that only happens in very specific circumstances. And now that's just a thing that they do for every champion. But it all started with Draven. It's true. It's true. <clears throat> I think high up there for me is Lulu. Mm, yeah. Um, because I do love playing her. I'm definitely biased to champions that I play because <laughs> you get like a kind of attachment to them. Uh, so I do really like Lulu. I also really like Lux. I think she's an older champion, but everything's kind of solid there for her. They really had a good idea for Lux. I have no idea what Zara's lore is, so even though she's my main, I can't say she's a favorite. But one of my all-time old favorites, I had two. Oriana was one, and then I don't know his lore, but Vagar just murdered me every time. He's so good. <laughs> I just love Vagar so much (laughs) so to say my one favorite champion would maybe be Lulu which is it's really hard to like dedicate yourself to one favorite (laughs) I know it's real Sophie's choice I know but it's Lulu or Lux I think Lux is kind of the basic bitch answer but I don't even care no no Lux is really good (laughs) I loved playing Lux for a long time yeah all right the next one would you say that's Stefan yeah Stefan Theus any ideas for fun new mechanics for future champs? All right, so I've got a one really no. good idea. Okay, so oh, okay. Yeah, stick with me here. So it's got a passive, right? Uh-huh. And it's got three stacks. Oh, God, John. <laughs> and then once you hit three stacks, you do true damage and get a shield, and you get a dash, and you also execute. Okay, and but there's no you, stealth. Um, so, like, is it really a passive? And you get a spell <laughs> shield as well. <laughs> right. What other keywords can we throw on there? Uh-huh. Yeah. It is funny we were just talking about wanting things to be really simple. 
But like, if I was thinking of new things that aren't in the game, uh, I think we talked about with Aatrox actually was like the idea of him d- having some interaction with dead allies, like getting a, like health from them or like consuming them or even kind of oh, reverse Viego yeah. taking over them, something like that. And um, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, God, I don't think I'm I'm good enough to think of a new mechanic. I'm trying to think of support things. <laughs> I remember back in the day, I was trying to pitch for a while that like there should be a champion that was able to like. Uh, they had the ability to mark um, a champion on the enemy team, and then um, their abilities would like affect them regardless of range, mm. um, which was actually something that they I feel like they incorporated it into a few different champions and to like a much lesser extent because the extent that I was pitching it was absurd and should never have been made. <laughs> um, but you do see that like with Aphelios's, um mark now mm. and also with the uh, um, the a uh, 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 sound like our daughter. Uh, uh, <laughs> She's uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> The uh, God, why well, can't I remember his name? He's from Sharima. Azir. He's sassy. Oh, Akshan. Akshan. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in case you're, in case you want a lower breakdown, folks, from Sharima, and he's sassy. <laughs> he's Akshan. <laughs> That's all you need to know about. Him. But uh, but yeah, his alt too with like the targeting. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. The other one I thought was um messing with ui elements like hiding your allies health bars like maybe as a support thing like you Ooh. prevent people from seeing how much like health you or an ally has something like that That's i neat. like that kind of like a continue like a like a different version of like the uh you know the nocturne blind that was what i was stuff. thinking about i was like mm. i really like nocturne alt what's like that <laughs> But that's fun it would just last like two seconds or something something like that yeah just to cause the chaos of or something ch- like that i really that's... like that in a team fight you could have like two people that they don't know how low somebody is for a couple of seconds <laughs> i mean that's one of the things i really like about really good nikos too mm-hmm. that like mm-hmm. uh, that reminds me of how bad i am at nico every time <laughs> i try to play her like when a really good Nico will like fucking bait you, like oh I got this really low health asshole. Oh shit, it's a full it's, health Nico. Yeah. God damn it! You're like I got this low health Caitlyn, even though I just killed Caitlyn four <laughs> seconds ago. No, I'm with you. Man, this bitch, re- she's rocking revive. We gotta knock her out. <laughs> Take this shit, noob. Did she get revive. God damn. All right. Speaking of things from old league that we gotta bring back. Time spent dead masteries. Thank you. Uh, or runes, I guess. Whatever. Oh man. All right. Increased gold per. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. Okay, next one's from the Mug of the North. If you could be rid of one league champion slash item for the rest of your life, who would it be? Silas. (laughs) You have to think about that. I fucking hate Silas so much. I put Yumi as my champion and I put Death Stance as my item. Interesting. I couldn't even think of an item. An item? Gore Drinker's up there for me? Yeah. Any, all of this like bruisery stuff, but I think it's all going to change soon anyway. Yeah. And it's just because the meadow right now is pissing me off. But yeah, I mean, yeah, items right. Like I, I agree with that sentiment. That sort of healing through damage. But it's like with items, I'm I forgive items because it's like you can tweak them and they can become shit or whatever. And there are champions yeah. who I don't like and things. But with Yumi, it's like a combination of shit I don't like. Where I don't like the play pattern. Yeah. And I don't like her as a champion because she's just a she's just a cat, and I don't think. I don't know her lore, but it doesn't seem terribly compelling. It's like all cylinders are firing Oh my, I imagine she just has amazing lore. (laughs) God, you know what? I kind of hope so, and I'll feel... I'd be fine rescinding this pick and going with Silas or whatever. <laughs> There's a few Silas. I just I ca- I can't play against. He's one of my kryptonites. Silas uh, Shaco is a kryptonite for me too. Mm. There's I feel just like certain <laughs> champions I fucking can't play against. Anyone? Oh yeah, Shake Shaco. Yeah. He. Anytime I see a Shaco in my game, I like make a mental note that like I'm always going to let the Shaco go. If, right. If the Shaco attacks me and runs away, I don't care how low right. the Shaco is. I, I think we need to get rid of. He gets to walk away. I'm we need, not ever going after We need to him. erase don't chase Singe. Don't chase Shaco. Mm. I think Shaco is an even worse idea. Because you can see the damage you're taking as you chase Singe. Sin, yeah. Shaco, you don't realize the, da- the danger you're walking into <laughs> until you've triggered the fucking uh, Illuminati pattern of... <laughs> Shaco boxes. The all-seeing eye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the yeah. There's there's a lot of champions that any champion that I 
uh, I feel like I'm beating them and then I die are very frustrating. Yeah, I know that feel. That's what annoys me about Silas, Silas so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, I win this fight. I'm dead. What? <laughs> yeah. Does he have a stun? What the fuck? Aurelia, Aatrox kind of feel that way to me sometimes. Yes. Oh, Aurelia. Like, oh, he's at zero health. Oh, he's got 100% health. What? Oh, that's, in, that's <laughs> yeah. a cool ability. That's cute. I love that. Where's my get all your health back button? I don't have one of those. <laughs> Fucking death <stand. laughs> All right, another one from the Mug of the North. What did you want to be when you were young? Mm. That's so cute. I wanted to be a paleontologist. I wanted to be. Oh, did you? <gasps> I had a I had a time I, I where I also wanted to be a paleontologist. I was a huge Jurassic Park yeah. fan, so I think that was a uh, yeah. I wanted to be a video game tester strictly <laughs> because of the Donkey Kong Country promotional video from Nintendo Power magazine. They like they sent this promotional video where this guy went to, you know, the the Nintendo Power or the the Nintendo of America Treehouse where they were working on the game and they, they sat down with the game testers and talked to him and I was like that's a fucking job? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and like as an adult I realize now they really glorified that job in the promotional <laughs> video and that is not necessarily a job that you would want um but God, they made it look fun in that video. I don't know what you're talking about. You get to play video games all day, man. It's like... (laughs) In the quest, it looks kind of fun. They get like their own little box that they're in. No one checks on them. Yeah. Um, I feel like I went through a lot of phases when I was a kid. I had a time where I wanted to be a vet, which I think is another common one for a young kid. Mm -hmm. Um, Pretty young, I also wanted to be an author, which I still do. That's the one that lasted um, I wanted to be an actress at some point, and then I wanted to do film. <laughs> Solid. I don't know. I wanted to. I yeah. wanted to be a vintner for about three weeks. I don't know why. Oh, what? They're wine make that people is. who make that, wine. Does that have to do with wine? Yeah. The oh, people okay. who make wine. Yeah. What age was little baby Mark? Yeah, it was a that school. you were like, I would like to make I wine. I think I played a lot of Harvest Moon at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it was like the the being outside and working. Like you have your own business. And that shit. That's the thing I like. The wine part was just like, mm. well, I don't know how to fucking grow corn, so I I could do that. <laughs> I don't That's know. So funny. It's <laughs> adorable. Oh. All right. Next question's from Second Star. What champions would you like to see as Star Guardians? As the first star, which colors and creatures, real or otherwise, would be the lore head picks for their own Okay, this is a lot. But anyway, who would we want to be Star Guardians? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had I had some thoughts. I'm not super deep into Star Guardians, um, but no, I like I like Aphelios because I want to see what they do with Alun in that context. Ooh, mm. I like that. Or like some older ladies like Leona or Renata. I thought, especially Leona, because she's I want to see a very mm. armored up Star Guardian. You know, I thought that could be cool. And then Shaco, because I don't, I don't know what the fuck you do with that. <gasps> That'd be great. Maybe he's that a villain. Was, you know what? I'm thinking of it. Leona is actually fucking hilarious because like these are star guardians that are like get their power from the first star. Mm. The sun must seem like such fucking small, small potatoes (laughs) to to a star guardian. It's like, oh, I guess we'll follow the smallest of the stars. (laughs) Cool deity, Leona. (laughs) So it's the first star I was reading up. It's kind of like this like, power that be type thing that gave them their power right that's the first star is it a i never conceptualized yeah. it as a person when i was reading through it me neither um although i mean i i guess that I, that could be a cool idea yeah. for leona anivia was my pick for that actually because i just want more mm. shit for anivia on uh, fucking true. stand her i want <laughs> star guardian um maokai <laughs> mm, yeah okay <laughs> I, I this might just be because our roommate dressed up like this when we were in LA Ooh. but I want to see Star Guardian Draven. That's fun. But like I don't want like he fits in really well. I want him in like the full mini skirt. I don't want him in one of those Ezreal outfits. Mm. Yeah, no, I I could see Draven wearing like the mini skirt. And I can feel him getting like super fucking into it. Sure. Like taking it like yeah, um, no no joke or meme on it just like genuinely like yeah, just like very just I got like, good legs, dog. I gotta show him off. <laughs> yeah, man. Fucking Draven would be owning it. He's like Dango from Reno nine one one. He's like I'm like a Panther. <laughs> <laughs> like a Star Guardian Panther. 
Yes, that's what I would like to see. Uh, in terms of my own uniform, I would pick forest green. Oh, that's what I was going to pick. Love that color. <laughs> that is his favorite color. Mm-hmm. Both of our offices that we're recording in right now are. <laughs> oh my deep god, green. you're right. We're both <laughs> in green rooms. I didn't think about that. Weird. I like dark blue. It's like gonna be a, a deep like navy blue, something like that. I'm mm-hmm. fine with that. Mm-hmm. And then the animal? My animal would be a ferret. Ooh, that's a good pick. <laughs> or a Draven's animal. I, for my real answer, besides Maokai, I think Heimerdinger would be a really good Star Guardian. Oh, man. Would he be kind of like their Q, almost? He, like, equips them all out. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's, that'd be that's great. Star Guardian tech. I, I like love that. that. What about your color and your uh, your medium? Ooh, okay. Heimerdinger's color. Oh, this is for you. For you. You, were you personally. Oh, if right I now. were a Star Guardian. <laughs> well, John already picked green, you bitch. <laughs> I would yeah. pick forest green. <laughs> <laughs> and a ferret. And a ferret. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I'm so into cats. It would be some kind of cat. Or fox, maybe. Ooh, fox. Oh, no, that's Ari. That's fine. I don't know. I liked it's Armadillo for my medium. I like Armadillos. Ooh. They're, they're neat. I like that. Yeah. Mm. Gerbil. Ger? <laughs> Let's just name animals. Really. <laughs> we okay. Jackalope. Uh, this, <laughs> this next question <laughs> is from Lightfire Six. Which characters do you think could receive more love from the devs regarding skins, lore, etc.? Uh, most of the Void Champs, mm-hmm. I feel like. Yeah, I put specifically Cho Cog, Kazix, and Velkaz. Yeah, yep. like just. Oh, I didn't even see that you put Feed the Void. Feed the yeah. Void. <laughs> <laughs> The old champs and, and Anivia. Really, I want to. I want Anivia um, to, to just fit into Orn's world. Yeah, because Orn was really well done. Yeah, I, mean, I have to open in. the door and let the cat in because it, he's pushing his face oh, against yeah. the door and he's got a toy in his mouth <laughs> and he's meowing even though his mouth is full and it's adorable. <laughs> he's so cute, and he might wake the baby if we just let him scream out there. You just walk in, bring the toy with you, buddy. <laughs> All right, what do you think, Mark? Well, y'all picked almost everything I have written down. Um, <laughs> I think the only other ones were like Heimerdinger because they use them everywhere yeah. else. So let's let's give him the, his just desserts, and then like Shabana, right? Because I feel like she's kind of shafted in the lore and gameplay wise. She's in a weir- really weird. Mm-hmm. And Oriana, honestly, that was a really recent one that felt like. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it feels like she's her models real old and her quotes don't line up and her lore is underwritten, but she's a really cool premise, and she gets used a lot yeah. competitively. Or she did. I don't That's know. true. That it's not like she's not played. Like Heimerdinger isn't really played very much. Uh, did you? Uh, how <laughs> dare you? He showed up a lot in Worlds. Thank you very That's much. True. In the that final was, five, I had to message Sarah. I was like, Sarah, there's a support Heimerdinger that is in the so Worlds. Wild. I cannot right believe now. this shit. <laughs> he, got, uh, he got played like two or three times, like just in the final five games. It was crazy. It is crazy. That's really, really funny. It's funny because I've been wanting to play support Heimerdinger like for a long time now and just didn't have the courage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question is from Noka. What champ slash stories do you guys most want to see getting the next arcane level or ruination level major narrative project? And what types of media would you like it to be in? I feel like I want to say, I'm probably going to say TV show for like all of it, honestly, because that would be my preferred. That's a tough one, though. Yeah. I want High Noon yeah. in the style of the Castlevania Netflix, Netflix oh, show. Like full anime. That'd be so good. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be really good. Yeah. Get get some, put some money into it. Get like, uh, I don't know, like Gynax or, or whoever, like, like really put your money in the animation and that could be fucking great i like that pick for a novel since it didn't seem like that was something that you wanted i would like them to do something with aurelia and the people the characters around her because i think yeah she's like she is ionia and you can tell a really good there's like a lot of internal stuff i think you could do with her and a novel could be a good vehicle <laughs> for that yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i would like this would be more cutesy but um something with bandle city and the yordles i'd really like to get a narrative project i think the yordles are kind of used as like little mascots sometimes but i think there could be some really good stories there it doesn't all have to be cutesy there can be some serious stories with the yordles even if they're adorable yeah, <laughs> yeah i think you got some good ones with like like poppy stands out to me it's like it's not like mm-hmm. the most serious thing, oh but it's God. still fun. And it's a neat story idea for a character, you know, with what's going on with her. Yeah. 
Lulu's story was tons of fun. Yeah, I think there's a lot of <clears> stuff there. Yeah. Me on that, I, I, it's, Demasi is kind of boring in a lot of ways, but I would like to see what happens next in Demacia so badly from where we left it off from the Lux comic and seeing that as a further comic would be great um and then also I think this would be such a good TV show the fucking Freljord is so good <laughs> just like everything that's going on in the Freljord even ignoring the void stuff but just focusing on like Ash and Sejuani mm-hmm. they had a really good comic that would be great making that into a film even instead of a tv show sure there's so many answers for this i can't even <laughs> yeah La, there's a lot of ways they could take this i know True. i would eat up any of it <laughs> yeah and i said it during the master Yi episode but moving away from narrative stuff into like a side game i really want a master Yi and wukong side scroller beat them up like you know double dragon yeah. i think it is like they're primed for that oh that'd be really fun that would be nice yeah Okay, the next question is top li- uh, from Top Lane Enjoyer. What are some of your favorite things, particularly Mark? So, um, <laughs> Top Lane Enjoyer doesn't care what John and I like, but Mark, what Fuck do you, you like? That's such a weird <laughs> fucking question. I didn't know where the hell to go with this. So I started random shit. <laughs> I like old. I like what? old video games. I've been playing a lot of PS2 games. My favorite game is probably Near, the original one for PS3. Mm-hmm. But I like that whole series. I like my favorite liquor is tequila. I've been drinking it while we do this episode. <laughs> <laughs> TV shows. I don't know. I like Buffy a lot. I like Xena. I like The Shield and The Sopranos. I don't know. What do, what do y'all got? Y'all jump in. I didn't write down anything here. Oh, uh, yeah. But I'm going to take all those categories that you just said. Sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, So, I'm, I mean, I also love old games. Um, I, love, I love classic Super Nintendo RPGs and, like, PS1 RPGs. I feel like it was, like, the golden era of RPGs. Um, and I replay those, like, all the fucking time. Chrono Trigger is my all-time fave. Uh, I like Mead. Uh, I like Firefly, uh, the television show. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh... <laughs> That's and I like music. I love movie oh, soundtracks and yeah. video game soundtracks. Mm. Yeah, I'm also obsessed with music. I listen to music constantly. I ma- recently made a Spotify playlist of like every song that I've liked, and I keep adding to it, and it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Nobuo Yamatsu is my favorite composer. Oh, very good. All the Final Fantasy. Sorry, music. I must have interrupted you. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to bake. I wouldn't say I'm particularly obsessed with old video games. I do like video games. My, I mean, if we're going, my favorite video game is Bioshock. If I had to pick one of all time, it would probably be that. Uh, I like books a lot. I just like to buy books. I mean, I read books too, but I have so many books in my home. <laughs> yeah, you love our own library here. Library. Mm-hmm. I like Chardonnay as far as alcoholic beverages go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm drinking and usually drinking. Yeah. I don't know what else. Yeah, I think that's us. Yeah, I guess. Right? I like, I like in- cats. Yeah, I like cats. I like dogs. Yeah. I like instrumental <laughs> metal. I've been listening to a lot of Ooh. like Angel Vivaldi and uh, Divin X, I guess. I don't know. Mm. You know, you know, those classics. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. and we oh, all play yeah. D&D yeah, was, we do all like D&D yeah. um, oh, TV, I do watch so much TV I rewatch TV all the time uh, Dairy Girls is probably one of my favorites highly recommend mm. that to everyone you might need subtitles because their <laughs> Irish accents are supremely thick and amazing <laughs> but I did need subtitles uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is probably one of my favorites too mm. it's a musical and it's so good it's so good <laughs> <laughs> oh we both like musicals me and John mm-hmm. yeah what's your favorite Favorite All right. Musical. Sorry, we don't have to keep talking. Ooh, about my musicals. favorite musical. Oh my god. That's tough. Sarah asked I me mean, this my, the first thing that popped into my wicked. head, huh? Oh, I was gonna say mine's probably Wicked. Wicked. Mm. Mm. Okay. I don't think it's the best, but the musical that got me into musicals that I really liked as a child was Annie. Oh, that's solid. So I still have a fondness for Annie and the Newsies. <laughs> oh man, because <laughs> that was a really <laughs> early one for me too. Oh, like, I haven't seen Newsies. I've seen new, like the the film Newsies like once i will say oh my god please watch it because fucking <laughs> christian bale is in it as like a 19 year old and you'll forget that bill pullman is there and then you're like oh my god bill pullman was in the new <laughs> <laughs> yes he Shit. is really fantastic highly recommend the disney newsies uh the next one's from frabus 
Uh, what do we think of the Gwen Legends of Runeterra deck? So that, I'm gonna take it away, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I read this full question. I think it was in context of us not really liking the Gwen lore. So I, I didn't know if they meant like from mm. a gameplay perspective or a a lore perspective. Gameplay wise, I think it's real interesting. The premise of Gwen's whole thing is a keyword called hollowed, where she'll have little followers or little like units that go out on the board, and when they die, it like permanently will. The first unit, whenever you attack, like gets a plus one attack for that round. So you'll have multiple units die, and like you'll attack, and your unit will get like plus three, plus five to its damage, which is very interesting. And then Gwen herself like repeats that on herself. It's an interesting premise. Lore wise, it's fucking weird. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I don't know what's your like. I know what's literally happening. I think John. I don't know. Yeah, I would say yeah. This was. She had one of the more confusing mechanics for me as I was like trying to read it. Like I had to play a few games, um, and then before it finally clicked, I was like, "All right, I get what's happening now." Mm. Um, and I like that. I mean, now that I get it, like it's a type of deck that actually forces me to pay attention to where I'm positioning my units, um, especially when I'm doing like the uh, Path of Champions, because the passive there is like not only does. Gwen get the bonus but also the person next to the normal person gets the bonus you've kind of got three champions that are you need to keep track of who you want that bonus to go to and um it's neat I I enjoy it it's not like my favorite deck but uh it's pretty fun yeah it does not like thematically with who she is as a character um it feels completely like random I don't know yeah like I'm not I'm not I don't feel the connection like especially compared to like some of the other newer ones like uh kaisa like absolutely her shtick makes complete sense to me like as the fight goes on she's just continually evolving Mm -hmm. and getting new shit um gwen like i assume she's making friends would maybe be my guess or like so like but then as they die she gets stronger the story being told through her cards is that she's fighting the black mist and comes upon like a hallowed like estate a manse and in there is like a big ballroom party and she is like the ghosts there are friendly and they're all they're all dressed elo- like very uh not eloquent they're dre- they're just very fancy i don't know and uh she's helping them fight the mist and i guess as they die they they aid her it kind of seems to be the the story of what's like happening, but it's almost like it's like just a completely thing that's orthogonal to anything that happens in her lore. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you yeah, know, know, it's weird. Fun gameplay, uh, weird, weird lore, but you know, whatever. At least you're trying something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. We good? I yeah. Think so. Okay. Another one from Top Lane Enjoyer. If you were sitting <laughs> down at a restaurant <laughs> and eating food, how many clowns would it take for you to stop eating? 24. Ooh. Oh, very, very specific. specific. Yeah. I uh, <laughs> I just pictured a table of clowns. And that, to me, that was four. <laughs> and then I just kept adding <laughs> tables of clowns. And once I hit 24, I was like, all right. That's what, that's what caused me to take that's pause. Too many clowns. If nothing else. <laughs> I, okay, I was in my very early 20s or late teens. I've never liked clowns. I'm not a fan. Um, I was at IHOP at like 2 a.m. <laughs> um, with some friends because this was back when we would play. We would go to the um, boardwalk. I, I grew up across the bridge from Seaside Heights, by the way, where they shot Jersey Shore. Oh. So I'm from the Jersey Shore. Yeah, we would go to the Jersey Shore um, and play DDR mostly. <laughs> for a really long time <laughs> and then cross back the bridge and go to ihop or the turd which was the tom Jerry diner but we called it the turd okay Classic. good to know yeah, so that's where i grew up but anyway we're in ihop it's two in the morning and as i'm staring at the window not paying attention a clown walked by and came into the ihop and i was like we have to go <laughs> <laughs> so one, one is the answer. <laughs> and also can you tell the clown to to move away from the door while i leave <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm braver now, <laughs> but eight, maybe eight plus, I'd be like, it's time to go. Follow-up question, though. Sure. What if the clown was doing magic? <laughs> I would leave immediately. John knows this about me. There, if there's one thing I hate, it's grown-ass adults doing magic tricks in front of me. I fucking hate that. 
because I feel like I have to treat you like a 10 year old doing magic tricks in front of me where I'm like oh good job that was cool I don't care I don't care about your stupid sleight of hand I get that it's a skill I really get that and Mark's doing the thumb trick right now. I understand here's the thing I hate magic tricks I hate them because they're not magic tricks they're illusions and they piss me off because as a child I thought people were actually doing magic and then I learned they weren't, uh, okay. and I'm still mad. I, okay, so <laughs> the truth anyway, comes out. Okay. grown ass men trying to do magic tricks in front of me, I just fucking can't. Like, please go away. <laughs> anyway, what was your answer, John? I also put one, but just because we had just watched Silent Hill 2, and they have that scene of the, the clowns in the food court, and all the kids are eating, and then it oh turns my all God, bloody and shit. Like a magic trick in what 3D a- right in your face. And <laughs> right? Could you Take imagine? Jesus. <laughs> That was a. This is a reference to a Patreon episode, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess to be fair, I did not imagine. I imagine like brought two p- two p.m. broad daylight outside, not two a.m. at an IHOP, which is a vastly different <laughs> environment. <laughs> like that IHOP makes it worse. You got your head on a right, fucking where? swivel at an IHOP when it's nighttime. All right. right? You're like, I'm eating pancakes at 2 a.m. <laughs> and like, what clown, what job did that clown just come from exactly. that had him busy until 2 a.m.? Right. What was that fucker doing at 2 in the morning that he was like, I'm still in my clown garb? <laughs> Nothing good. Nothing you safe. Know he's drunk. Nothing for children, surely. <laughs> he was for sure drunk. Who goes at IHOP at 2 in the morning goes sober? Everyone there. 19 year olds. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. The next one comes from Edward Hickson. If you could revert one champion's lore to their old lore, excluding the Institute of War part, which champion would you choose? Mundo. Mm. Mundo. Dr. Mundo. Yes. I, that's I what I can't. I actually picked Oriana, <laughs> but Mundo is a really good pick. Ooh. We did just talk about Oriana. But Mundo, I mean, we, when we did Mundo's episode, it we was the so quote, excited. old lore. We loved it. Yeah. It was great. And then they changed it, and we we're like, why did you do this? He was perfect for Evelyn. I just don't understand. Yeah. Um, there's more to this question, though. Uh, what were your roles in Riot when you worked there, and how long did you work there? Hmm. Uh, John, do you want to start? Or? Sure. <laughs> um, so I I started in 2011. Um, I started as a tech support agent, and then I became tech lead, and then I became assistant manager with the tech teams and player behavior teams underneath me. Um, and then I became a live services manager with the tech team, player behavior, game and account, legendary support, special projects, and the social media teams under me. Um, and I was there for, um, five and a half to six years. We left in 2016, right? Um, yes, I think so. Yeah. So, uh, close to six years. Yeah. I see styling over here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I started as a, as a player support tech uh, I don't know, individual contributor. I don't know what the title, original <laughs> title was. Um, and I eventually I moved over to the QA department, and I was doing QA very specifically QA compatibility and performance. So that was like making sure the game ran on low spec and helping our various teams do their their product testing uh, against the various like configurations and 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 specs that our players use. Um, and that's where I spent most of my time was doing that QA stuff. I guess I was there for about five years, and that's about how long I was in L.A. for, so that's about right. Yeah. I was at Riot for 90 days. <laughs> <laughs> I was a temp. They were hiring temps um, cause they ha- in player support because they had a shit ton of tickets. They were really, really behind on the tickets. So they hired temps to kind of be trained lightly in all of them. Tech, which we never did. Tech was never behind on support tickets. Y'all were on top of your shit. <laughs> Um, but player behavior, like billing, um, and the, those were the two I mostly did. 90% of my time was on player support tickets, which was a wild time. Mm-hmm. Was just reading tickets, being like, I was banned, I shouldn't have been. So I looked into their account, and they dropped slurs, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, you should be banned. <laughs> that was mostly what I did. Yeah. <laughs> and I sat next to Sarah, <laughs> who was doing the exact same thing as me, and we really had a lot of fun. That's when we bonded. That's when Sarah and I became friends. Is when we were sitting next to each other at Riot for 90 days, and we both tried to get a full-time job there, and they didn't hire either of us, <laughs> so we bonded over that, too. <laughs> oh. Okay. Next question is from Lack of Reality. Would you rather have Riot get rid of the world building they've done for a decade and reinstate the Institute of War, 
or have our cane wiped from existence? This is an evil fucking this question. This is a tough one. How dare you put <laughs> this fucking Fuck evil you lack more. of reality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of trouble with this one. Uh, I think I came down on the side of keeping our cane. Cause I, I know, right? I kind of want to keep our I mean, too. Ooh, interesting. My, my thought process was, as much as I don't like the Institute of War, it has been, you know, Riot's been doing this shit for a while, and I feel like they could do that that whole premise a lot better now. If you That's true. I, and it would be really funny. Yeah, that too, right? <laughs> Don, you would um, get rid of Arcane? I did say wiping Arcane, because the way I figured was that Arcane's only possible because of the new world building, wow. I feel like. <laughs> Way to so use thought, your brain. <laughs> like, if, if, if you get rid of Arcane, but we keep the world building, there's always the chance that we'll, we'll be able to like come up with uh, you know, like a, a better... Not better, but like we'll be able to come up with more arcanes using sure. the worlds that they've created. Whereas, like if we're stuck with the Institute of War shit, then I mean, arcane will have existed just by the nature of the question. But there's a much better chance that that was like, you know, lightning striking, and it's <laughs> unlikely it'll mm-hmm. strike twice. John's really the logical one here, and Mark and I just went with our our emotions. Know. It's a, you know what? It's a que- it's a a question of like how does this. How does this world work when these things don't exist, right? Because, like, Arcane That's would not true, exist. Right? Yeah. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, like, how does Arcane come about if the world building has been reversed? Like, it probably doesn't. We've got to suspend some disbelief for this question. I know. It's a weird, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God we don't have to live in that world. They both exist. That's true. We get both. This makes me appreciate, like, the this, this shit that we read. <laughs> like, even when we're like, oh, this is bad. It's like, well, thank God we're, we didn't have to eliminate all of it. To save Arcane. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Another one from Lack of Reality. Even though we haven't gotten to him yet, we all know Shaco has no lore. So if you were to make up a quick concept for him, what would it be? I have an answer. Do y'all, y'all, got, y'all got anything in the chamber? I don't. So I'm going to let you it. go first because I actually just gonna, haven't thought here, about here's it. Here's the thing. So. I, anything I come up with, even if I thought about it for hours, Mark, your answer is going to be better. I'll, so give me yours. Uh, uh, he's... <laughs> Uh, he's, uh, he, he goes, uh, I said Woody to Gwen's Buzz Lightyear, so he's like a doll that was created <laughs> alongside, kind of alongside her, and where she got all the positive and like optimism, yay! He like became very jealous, and so when you know, like Viego, even like the ruination kind of fucked him up and turned him into a big evil doll. I don't know. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with uh, just some dude. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> just some dude. Just, just some dude. Uh, loves dressing like a fucking clown. Mm. Learned magic, so it looks like he's disappearing, but really it's just so like... So he can spook teenagers at <laughs> Smoke cloud. Okay, yeah. here's my thought now. This dude, Shaco, he is just some dude. He's an absolute simp for LeBlanc, and he's just trying to get her attention. <laughs> And he's like, oh, maybe my clown outfit will match her weird shit. Pitches love clown outfits. He does outfits. his magic trick where he duplicates himself. Yeah. He's like, look, I could do it too, LeBlanc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No- notice yeah. me. Yeah, notice me. Uh, ooh, maybe it's a LeBlanc clone that's gone rogue and it's dressed itself as Shaco. Oh, man. Oh, my. Oh. Mark, that's so much better. Shaco is LeBlanc. But, uh, but literally, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, literally, he's one of the LeBlancs who's just gone rogue. Oh my god, that's oh, like so that. good! I love that. I'm sure whatever we read will be better. That. It will be. I'm sure he has great, great, extensive. Lore. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe by the time we get to Chico, <laughs> no, it's like uh. all right. Uh, another one from Locker Reality. What champions do you think would fit best in the following skin lines? Assuming they aren't a part of them: High Noon, Gothic, not Fright Night, but Gothic, and Arcade. Hmm. Ooh, are we thinking like appearance wise or like lore wise? Gothic, I would want to see Gothic fucking anyone. Honestly, yeah. the Gothic skins are so good. Gothic Brom, holy, oh, uh, <gasps> give me a Gothic Brom skin with that I emo hair do. from like 2004. Would love I it. I liked Mundo mm-hmm. for this one. Frankly, I like Mundo for any skin line. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, but I don't know if he'd fit in High Noon. <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> Arcade or Gothic Mundo would be I good. I think High Noon for Mundo too. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to I just put them, put them in anywhere. I don't give a shit. That's fair. high noon dough. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Fuck you, John. High noon dough. There we go. We figured it out. Solved. Um, arcade. Who would be good for arcade? I like when they do 
like I love uh, Arcade Hecarim so much because you just don't expect him to have like a bright, colorful skin like that. So like a Malphite, Malkai, Fiddlesticks, Arcade Fiddlesticks. Those are all real Vex good. Have an Arcade skin yet? Ooh, no, she only has like two skins. I feel like Vex would be good in her. Honestly, yeah. I feel yeah. like Vex would be good in High Noon too. I'd mm, love that shit. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. I thought Evelyn for High Noon. She's like a, one of the saloon girls mm. kind of, which is kind of like her tango oh, skin. Oh, I love that. that. About it. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Do it better. <laughs> Maybe they'll just reinvent the tango skin to be high noon. Please. Um, for Arcade, I like, like, Ramus or Cho'Gath. Mm. Ooh, yeah. Oh, Cho'Gath would be really good. We've seen we've seen the, the or precursor any, to that with Cho'Gath, Cho'Gath Eats the World. Yeah, exactly. So they just gotta, like, <laughs> make it. <laughs> I'd be interested to see what the Void Champs would look like Ooh, in a high noon true. setting. That's an inter- That's a really interesting High pick. noon. Because they would. I, you think they would do like the me- like some of the machine stuff that kind of goes on, like like Kha'zix yeah. maybe. Ooh, or... I think Malzahar mm. would fit really well. Yeah, he. Oh, in that's High noon. that's a really good pick. High noon Malzahar. Yeah. I like Nyla for High Noon too, because she's got kind of like a water Ooh. and lasso type thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, and she also has that like. That attitude, yeah. where she just yes. like she'd kick in a saloon bar door and just wreck the place. She got demons already, you know. She that would be one of those ones where it's like <laughs> that's true. It's the same lore, but she's just like cowboy. You know, that means <laughs> high new Nila. It feels nothing but joy, but she's a cowgirl. <laughs> and like, <laughs> bang, and bang, what bang. do you do for like? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that'd be like a really interesting conflict between her and Ash. Because they'd probably both be out to do the same shit. Like Nila would probably be out there trying to like fight demons and shit, and Ash would want her help, but also like maybe not want the help of a demon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. And I say Cled for Gothic too. I don't know why. I just liked it. I don't <sighs> think he really fits. That'd be great. I don't care. <laughs> yes, do. anyone could be Gothic. <laughs> it's. Goths are welcoming it's all. It's a state of mind. <laughs> Ezreal. Just listen. To, oh my yeah, God, Gothic yeah. Ezreal. Please. Be, be very My Chemical Romance. Hell fucking yeah. <laughs> How could this happen? That's emo. You have to listen to System of a Down or something. <laughs> no, Evanescence. I mean, that's the true goth way. Dude, Evanescence came on the radio Ezreal. the other day. It fits. <laughs> and I loved it. Better than it. It's been forever since yeah. I listened to him. Uh, as an essence. Ooh, I like it. Yeah. Man, his name just fits into all these emo bands. <laughs> <laughs> My Chemical Ezreal. <laughs> Taking back Ezreal. These are subtle ones, right? <laughs> all right, can you scroll down so I can read the last question, John? Oh, yeah. This one, like, just came in the other day. Just came in. Hot off the press. Boop, 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 boop. Um, if you... <laughs> If you could name a league champ that had a special ability or passive, what would they be? I don't get this question. You gotta, you gotta make up a league champ and a special ability and passive for him. Oh, I'm too stupid for this. Fuck. I'm sorry. Um, it's almost my bedtime. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think what I would call that shit that I talked about earlier about hiding the health bars. Mm, that's Something true. Shroud. Okay, let's just build off that. So a champion who hi who is able to hide their allies in some way who i feel like that's just like what that? Gwyn does with the mist <laughs> no 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 she only protects herself in that Not in being able to being able to disguise the injuries of your allies i guess mm. hmm. I I, I, maybe like a makeup artist <laughs> i don't like it. <laughs> makeup artist champ. do a full beat that's that. what the passive is called full yeah. beat and then it's like the that's what Ooh. they call makeup right when you do the full Thing. I have no idea. Go for it, Mark. I have no idea. I trust you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Face off. <laughs> <laughs> Face off's a great show. Oh man, that's got to be one of the abilities. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then maybe they can uh, make two of their allies look like the other one. Ooh, you know what I mean? Put the. I do kind of like that. Put the Nico passive on people. Yeah. Like yeah this yeah, makeup yeah. champ we're putting together. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the hell they're called. Where would they be that from? That we're making up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I like Zahn for this one. Like, like they worked yeah, out in like the right? Zahn like, like off that. Broadway or whatever. Ooh, and they disguise people to go to Piltover or something like that. Sure. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. 
they like hide augments with makeup. Ooh, Ooh I, like I do that. like that actually. Especially they're all fucked up. We're fucking cheese. Yeah, they help the victor people. Man, I'm liking this. We're yeah. crafting an actual champion here. <laughs> <laughs> In real time. All right, what it. are we gonna? What are we doing for the name? Oh, do we I'm, got a name for him? I liked. Uh, I like like an Yvette type something like with a Y or like wait, I was thinking lady, but it could okay. be a guy too. No, Yvette's good. Do we want this person to be the person they they teased in that Zon oh, story Mama that Elodie? we think turned into? Yeah, except Mama Elodie. We got to change the name because oh. she doesn't do anything with music. <laughs> That's true. Um, Mama. Uh, Mama Rouge. Mama. Mama A Cup. <laughs> Mama A. <laughs> <laughs> Mom makeup. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. Ship it. Well, you know it needs some tweaking. <laughs> but there is there is the base riot. <laughs> the, base? the base, yeah, yeah. the base, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, and then you... that's the foundation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man. And then it's the first skin you give it will be a lower head skin. I don't know what that's going to look like. That's up to you. We've done the rest of the work for yeah. you. Yeah. We can't do everything <laughs> we can't for you. Do you got to fly everything on your own. Riot. <laughs> got to leave the nest sometime. And if you can give me Barn Bard. <laughs> Great. <Yeah. laughs> While you're at it. <laughs> While you're at it. Oh, that's all. That's all the questions. Yeah, those are that's fun. That's it. Yeah, that was fun. Well, thank you all for sticking with us and yeah. listening and and all of that it's it's fantastic you've all been great yeah and we love you all uh-huh we love you all the same as a friend you're all our <laughs> beautiful little children <laughs> with <laughs> although we do have a child now i do love her more mm, i don't know That's she didn't true. ask us which which champion we like the most so that's, That's true. true. She doesn't even give a shit about what champion. She doesn't <laughs> care at all about. She doesn't me, care about Mama think. Acup. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Poppy. <laughs> all right. Um, well, that's it. Thank you for listening today, every other day. It's really wild. I don't know why y'all want to hear us talk. I'm a fucking idiot, <laughs> but it's it's great. It's really wor- it's really helping my self esteem. <laughs> I can tell. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's radiating confidence. Um, we have a Twitter. <laughs> It's at Loreheads. <laughs> we also post these on YouTube. John has some parodies there. If you could subscribe, that would be phenomenal. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. getting pretty close to... A thousand. Know, a yeah. thousand, which is pretty neat. Be uh, really helpful. Um, we have a Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash Loreheads. John streams over the weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, depending on how the weekend goes. Um, he does TFT and random indie games and stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to get back to streaming, but it's been rough with John being back at work and taking care of a baby all day. So we'll see. <laughs> um, we uh, have a Discord as well. The link is in the description of this episode, and it's pinned on our Twitter. If you want to come in and chat about lore or vent about your games or tag John, and John reads all the all, every Discord message. I'm pretty sure passes John's eyes That's at some close, point. Yeah. So. <laughs> You could chat with him or tag me or Mark, and we'll we'll pop in. Except and chat in with general, you. I'll be honest. General goes general by. General goes by too fast. Yeah, so that's if true. you're messaging me in general, if and you don't tag me, that shit's gonna disappear forever, and I'm never gonna find it. <laughs> that's fair. We have a Patreon as well. We, you know, we talked about it before. We just talked. Uh, watched Silent Hill too which was a lot of fun and we vented about that uh we also watched the warcraft movie and we have a couple videos on there not much we do we are thinking about maybe doing some video content for the new arcane stuff that's kind of coming around for uh the one year anniversary Mm. uh they're dropping some things so we'll see but yeah we do have a patreon thank you so much to all of our patrons but a very special thank you to our madarda and all chat tier enabled patrons chloe things kindred enjoyer king of hearts Rel, Shupa Moustache, and Techno Robert. You are all amazing. And, um, you Ooh. know, I would do another 100 episodes if it meant hanging out with y'all for longer. <laughs> nice. <huh? laughs> Nailed it. Any final thoughts? No, thank you. Thank yeah. you all. 
really appreciate everyone listening and the, the questions were tons of fun to to think about and look at and you know yeah it's awesome like you said it is it is uh, it, it boggles my mind it bottles my mind my mind gets all bottled up <laughs> when i think about the fact that not only we hit 100 episodes but that you know there's a bunch of people who, who actually listen it's great yeah and please join us next week because we're going to talk about the unbreakable sphere pantheon 